Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good to see you again. <laughs> I'm gonna have you lie back. Mm. And you're still not sexually active, right? No. Uh, I did have some. I, I after our appointment uh, last yeah. year, I realized there's just a lot I don't know about. I think the female body, and I never yeah. really had like a I think a good sex ed education. So I just had some general questions. Let's about talk. Stuff. That's what I'm here for. So all I'm doing right now is just a breast exam. Um, and breast exams are one of those things that, you know, you don't have to feel on your breasts all the time because especially because you're young, you're going to feel little lumps and bumps. Um, and that's normal. Yeah. Okay? But if you ever feel something hard and you get your period and it's still there and it's tender, that's something to bring attention to, to like a doctor. Okay. But what questions do you have about sex? So it's um so the first question I guess would be mostly about the hymen exactly. Yeah. I realize I don't know how that works. So yeah. the hymen, what is it exactly? So it's like a membrane. Mm -hmm. So if this is the let's see, if this is for example, this is your uterus. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then on here's the this is vagina. Yes. And this is the outside of the vagina okay. over here. The hymen is basically a thin membrane that sits on the outside right here, okay. right at the entrance of the vagina. All right. And when you don't have sex yet, mm -hmm. that hymen is still, like there's still a mem white membrane that's right there. Okay. Most women though, mm -hmm. you know, when they put in tampons or other things, that hymen tends to get okay. broken anyway. Right. Um, and so if that happens, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Uh -huh. But usually during your first time when you have sex, it gets Okay. That's why it's a little painful. Oh. So the first time you have sex, it can be a little, like, uncomfortable mm -hmm. because that it breaks through okay. that membrane. So, and when women bleed the first time they have yeah. sex, is that because of the hymen tearing? Yes. So, are there blood vessels in the hymen then? There are blood vessels surrounding in the vagina. Okay. And that's what, and because that's never been stretched out, uh -huh. that tends to bleed a little bit. Okay. And that's perfectly normal, but that's mm -hmm. why whoever you decide to have sex with first. Yeah. They need to go slow and, you know, mm -hmm. make sure that you're also like comfortable and relaxed and have, you know, that allows you to have lubrication down there. Okay. So it's not as painful. All right. And yeah. um, do uh, hymens, I guess the yeah. way I heard it once is that like, I don't think this is right, but somebody said that the, the, the hymen is like a scrunchie and then it expands when you put something in it and then it contracts when you take it out. Like they even said during the first time you have sex, you don't have to tear your hymen. But I can't imagine. No, that's yeah. Okay. Don't listen to that. It's All right. literally a sheer covering. Okay. okay. On the vagina. Okay. Good. I'd be surprised most women by your age, because you've used tampons before or mm -hmm. had anything else in there potentially, mm -hmm. you know, even vibrators or dildo, dildos, they, yeah. they break through it. So, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it may not. It may not be. There are certain types of hymens that are called imperforate, meaning mm -hmm. there's like a hole in it, but it's not completely torn. Those are medical issues that okay. you have to address with the doctor because sometimes they have to cut the rest of the hymen. Oh, okay. Yeah. So for like, um, say a teenager, the first time yeah. she's using, she has her period, and uh, should do you recommend they use uh, pad pads or tampons? It's it's comfort level. Okay. I mean, really, it's the thing is when you're a teenager and mm -hmm. they're like in school yeah. and they're playing sports, mm -hmm. it's really hard to wear pads, right? Yeah. Um, so most teen my teen patients they mm -hmm. end up wearing tampons. Okay. Once, once they get comfortable, the problem is a lot of kids are not taught by their moms or mm -hmm. they're like you said, there's not a lot of sex education. So they come to me and then mm -hmm. we talk about how to do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So that's, all right. That sounds good. <laughs> um, I guess I also had a question about what was the, uh, uh, the labias, I think. Yeah. Which, I, which one was the majora and which one was the minor, I think? I'll show you. I'm okay. going to show you. Yeah, sure. This, <laughs> so you can sit up there, hon okay. hello, honey. This is the outside here. Uh huh. See these big lips here? Uh huh. That's the majora. Okay, so that is majora. The inside right here uh -huh. is the menorah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. And they, you know, everybody has different majoras and different menorahs. Okay. So it sounds good. You know, this picture perfect, like mm -hmm. vagina that looks like this, mm -hmm. that's not reality. Okay. Okay. A lot of girls come to me and they're like, why does my vagina not look like that? Mm. Every vagina is different <laughs> and every vagina is beautiful. So <laughs> there's nothing wrong with yours. Oh, that sounds good. So when you, the first time you have sex, yeah. does the vagina actually stretch out a little bit to accommodate what's going in there? The first time, a little bit. It depends on the 
size of the penis too, okay. or if you decide to be sexually active with females, if okay. you guys use toys, okay. it accommodates through that. But it takes several times mm -hmm. until you get a little more comfortable. Okay. So it may not, it, your, the vagina will accommodate, but it takes practice. Oh, okay. So don't be alarmed if the first time is not the best. All right. <laughs> it usually <laughs> isn't. Okay. It takes practice, just like anything else. And you, then you figure out what works for you. Okay. So if something doesn't feel right to you, you tell your partner mm -hmm. and you try something else. All right. The biggest thing for women, it's um, sex is mental, right? So you, when you're mentally stimulated and you're attracted to somebody, that's when you get that lubrication down there. Okay. And that's what makes sex more enjoyable. Okay. All right. Yeah. And most women, they can't mm -hmm. orgasm on the inside. Oh, really? Okay. A lot of women orgasm on the outside. So mm -hmm. use that clitoral stimulation. Okay. And you can show your partner how to do that. All right. You know, a lot of guys don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't think I know how to do it either, yeah. honestly. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is your time. You can practice. <laughs> There's no shame in masturbation. So you can okay. do like any of that just so you can figure out what you like. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I never knew that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So all I'm going to do, honey, I know because remember we talked about paps. You don't really, yeah. uh -huh. if you're not sexually active, I would say, you know, once you become sexually active, okay. definitely do a pap. Mm -hmm. Or if you aren't sexually active by the time you get to 30, okay. then I would get paps. Okay. But otherwise, right now, mm -hmm. you you don't have to unless you absolutely want me to. No, I'm gonna yeah. do that. <laughs> so all I'm gonna do. Have you have any discharge issues? Or? Um, I whenever I do have discharge, I don't. I think it's normal, but yeah. um, I, I guess uh, I just use the temporary pads, you know, just yep. so it doesn't get too dirty. Um, yeah. Is that something that you recommend too? Yeah. Or? So discharge is normal for young women, mm -hmm. especially like a white discharge as long as it's not itchy oh okay and it's not thick like hot it's cheese okay and that's not normal uh, if you notice a like a smelly odor or mm -hmm. it's um like a fishy odor or it's different colors then that could be a bacterial infection oh okay but otherwise totally normal to have some physiologic discharge yeah okay coming down just a little bit in just make that show okay Perfectly healthy. Okay. <laughs> you can scooch on back. All right. All right. What questions do you have for me? And so, without, so with the past, where even though yeah. I have an HPV vaccine, um, yes. even I, I, as soon as I have sex, I still probably need to yes. um, get it. Yeah. Because the HPV vaccine, although it prevents mm -hmm. like a bunch of different types of HPV, yes. unfortunately, not all of them. So, um, that's why when you're sexually active, that's how you can get HPV. Okay. That's why we recommend it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then during my period of when I, I, I get minced or I get cramps, yeah. um, I usually use ibuprofen, but I heard that's not the greatest for your kidney over time, I think. Um, I mean, you're using it only when you have your period, yes. right? Uh -huh. That's okay. okay. If you used ibuprofen like every day uh -huh. for years, that would not be good. Okay. Um, but occasional use, like when you're on your period, mm -hmm. is okay. Yeah. I know some other women use like Tylenol and Vidal. Yeah. Do you recommend uh, one over the other? or So Tylenol doesn't work that great oh, okay. for <laughs> menstrual cramps, unfortunately, because mm -hmm. um, menstrual cramps are more inflammatory, mm -hmm. and so ibuprofen is an anti-inflammatory, so you want to use something in that class. Oh, okay. okay. Vidal, honestly, is just marketing. <laughs> it's just marketing. Okay. But that's all it is. It's just another pain reliever. Oh, okay. Interesting. So I say ibuprofen, mm -hmm. you know, or naproxen, those are the more common ones okay. for menstrual cramps that work a little bit better. Uh, do you recommend like supplements here? I've heard vitamin yeah. B uh, helps. Uh, is there anything out there that might help with You uh, can try, I mean, as far as like uh, for menstrual cramps, yeah. anything that's anti-inflammatory, so like turmeric or natural. Oh, I do take turmeric. Yeah. I was wondering if I did anything. <laughs> anti-inflammatory natural things mm -hmm. like that can help. Okay. Um, but ultimately something like an ibuprofen is going to work better for the oh, pain. Okay. Yeah. okay, interesting. Yeah. I know that some of my friends, uh, even ever since yeah. their early 20s, they took uh, birth control pills to manage their yes. period symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that has long-term health effects or is that yeah. kind of normal? So yeah, I mean, especially if your cramps are getting mm -hmm. debilitating or you feel like you need something to help control that mm -hmm. and birth control is kind of what we recommend okay. um, there's 
pros and cons to any medication, right? right? So the good thing is with birth control, one is that it helps with the pain, mm -hmm. it helps with your menstrual flow. Mm -hmm. um, it does reduce your risk of ovarian cancer really? down the road. Interesting. And uterine cancer. Wow. The only thing is if you use it for like 10 plus years, it can slightly increase your risk of breast cancer. Really? So it reduces one and it may increase with long-term use. I heard uh, yeah. some heart problems might be associated with it. Is that something different or probably? That's, yeah. If you, let's say you had high blood pressure and risk factors mm -hmm. for blood clot yeah. or heart disease, then we don't recommend it. Okay. But you're young and healthy. <laughs> you don't have that. So don't worry about that. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, do I have any more? I think that might be all I have for okay. right now. <laughs> you got it. Well, it's good to you. see you, honey. It's good to see you too. All right. Don't work too hard, honey. Okay. <laughs> All right. Come on out whenever you're ready. Sure.